Hello, this is Tom Brevoort. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Yes, welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 220, and uh, it's, uh, I've labelled it, you know, I was trying to find a, bana- find a name for it. I've labelled it Moonshine. I have no idea if that works or not. It's a new comic <laughs> book <laughs> review, and you are with your two high priests of Conchu, uh, Rebecca and Ray. Uh, Rebecca, how are you this early morn? It's it early in the morning. <laughs> Uh, and I have been up a fair bit of the night, and oh gosh. we have a new Moon Knight uh, run to talk about. So that's that's the only thing that matters. Oh yes, and what an issue! Can't wait to get into it. Uh, yes, this is for all intents a, a reaction episode. Uh, so the the uh, issue was released on the twenty first of July, just just yesterday for me. Anyway, Rebecca, yeah, it's yesterday for yeah, you yesterday technically for me, as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's fresh, fresh off the press and, and we'll get right into it as to the reactions, what we thought, uh, before that, of course, a big thank you to our sponsors at Petrunis, uh, those listed as co-producers and executive producers, uh, on each of the episodes. Thank you so much for, for helping, uh, contribute to, to putting out this podcast. So a big thank you to Daniel, Justin, Derek, Kyle, Wayne, Jordan, Josh, James, Russell, and Anthony. Uh, thank you very much. Also, on top of that, Fringe Night by Daniel Doing, an original indie comic based on Erie, Pennsylvania's very own mysterious superhero. Go check it out. I've got something in the uh, spectacles later on, just how you can support that. Uh, as well as Hello Headphones, empowering gamers to play at their best, and Dreamland Comics, the superhero superstore. Uh, so, yeah, Rebecca, uh, a very exciting issue. Only a little bit of news uh, that's mm-hmm. come out during the week, uh, and that was as posted in our Facebook group and page and social media platforms, uh, the cover to issue four of this series by Jen McKay and Alessandro Capuccio uh, has been released, and it, it has kind of turned a few heads. Rebecca, what are your thoughts on this cover? I, I, I don't know. Are there any thoughts other than it's Tigra? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess just very excited. I, I guess it's because it's... Um, uh, I was just uh, tweeting with World of World of Tigra, World of Tigra on on right. Twitter. Uh, it's just it's just I, cool, and and Tigra. the the past yeah, well, yeah. tomato tomato. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> We've oh, got to ask I'm her. I'm going to claim random British accent. There. I have no idea. <laughs> Tiger um, makes more sense, I guess. But oh, yeah. oh look, I don't know. There's my yeah. difference. Tiger makes sense. Tigra sounds like an actual name. So hey. <laughs> true. Um, but I guess it surprised people because of their early association in the West Coast Avengers. Uh, some people have been calling for it for a while. Um, you know, it's been phew, decades, really, yeah. um, before we've seen them. That brief stint in God and Country by Mike Benson, we had that um, scary hallucination of, of um, I'm going to call it Greer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but so on the cover of this, it, it just has, you know, got a lot, a lot of tongues wagging as to them teaming up. Uh, I guess the story as well. We don't know. Uh, there's a maybe, little bit maybe of a... Maybe Jed really likes cat, women, cat related Marvel characters. Who knows? Oh, true. Yes, of course. Yeah. That was I, I had... my real thought. I was like, oh, he's collecting all uh, the cats. I approve. And... Next, next <laughs> But She's oh, in cat. Yeah, Patsy. She's in oh. Iron Man. Oh yeah, I I read the earlier Iron Man issues. I hadn't been following it though, but I remember she teamed up with him. Yeah, so she's still with him in the series. Yeah, yeah, very much. Oh, cool. Oh, well, cat lovers out there, you must be all yeah. a very uh, you know very well satisfied. Um, but the synopsis for issue issue four, and look, we haven't even technically delved into the series yet, is um. <laughs> A night in the life. From waking till midnight, Moon Knight's life is filled with peril. A mysterious foe attacks from a new and unexpected direction. An old foe comes to visit, and Moon Knight finds himself. Oh, sorry, an old friend comes to visit, and <laughs> Just Moon Knight finds. 
<laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I was about yeah. to say, I was reading that going, oh, hang on, when are they going to get to... Um... <laughs> An old friend comes to visit and Moon Knight finds himself answering the same question over and over again. Why do you wear the mask? Featuring a guest appearance from the striped sensation Tigra Tigra. So, <laughs> um, so McNiven cover looks pretty cool. I just, you know, it's um, just basically them with their costumes in tatters. Um, yeah, but they look uh, like they're yeah. fighting on the same side, which is good, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so exciting to see. But as I said, like we don't even know what's in issue one, two, and three. We will soon. Uh, so we don't know the context for this at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, interesting stuff by way of news. Uh, Rebecca, I'm very excited about this issue. Shall we just jump into it yeah, now? Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. So, this is Moon Knight, and going off the wiki fandom, this is Volume 9, Issue 1, so released July 21st, 2021. We have uh, writer Jed McKay, pencil inker Alessandro Capuccio. Uh, is it Rachel or Rochelle Rosenberg? I'd say Rochelle. But... Rochelle Rosenberg, colorist. Uh, VC's Corey Petit, he's uh, uh, no stranger on Letters and Tom Brevoort as editor. So uh, currently available only on floppies and digital. It's just come out, as I said. It's as fresh as you can get. Uh, so if you've got your copy or if you're reading your digital, uh, yeah, read along to this discussion. <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> loonies, for those that don't know, what Rebecca and I will do, we'll go through a synopsis uh, to give you a roundabout summary of what the issue was, but we'll get into it in our discussion with notes um, and aspects ranging from the writing, the art, themes, characterizations, and holy dooly were there references to other runs. So, um, yeah, all of that. And I've actually added also uh, notes at the end, Rebecca, taking a leaf out of some other podcasts. So just any little tidbits uh, I found interesting anyway uh, that may be, may be of interest. And we will uh, cap that off with a moon rating so, uh, Rebecca, may I ask off the bat which rating system you'll be choosing today? Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be Connor's. <laughs> Go, Connor's use rating system. So, for, for some listeners, we have two systems. You'll get the difference. Uh, one's called the vanilla rating. The other is Connor's use rating system, Our uh, one of the OG hosts for this show. One has uh, okay, wearing so- it and the other doesn't. Exactly. <laughs> One is absolutely surreal and the other is pretty much straightforward. Um, okay, so here's the bare bones, i.e. the synopsis. Uh, Rebecca, do you want to do Do you want to do it? If, is that okay? Yeah, go or... on. Okay. I'll do um, it. Excellent. Uh, there we go. Amidst discussions of his relationship with Konshu with his therapist, Dr. Sturman, Moon Knight stalks the streets, protecting travellers of the night and those who seek help at his newly formed Midnight Mission. He deals with vampires, human rats, supervillains, um, with deadly force, but not without some silver linings. Moon Knight takes in an involuntary vampire named Reese, but also runs into a fellow member of the cult of Conju, Dr. Bader, who has no compunction to meeting out justice himself. Elsewhere, as Mr. Knight, Dr. Sturman tells him the story of Cademan, Tadmon, Tadmon, uh, how one can be elevated after interacting with a higher being. So could Konshu have altered Mark's brain to be something more extraordinary? Later, back at the mission, Mr. Knight and Reese, his vampire aide, uh, watched across the street by a mysterious figure intent on Moon Knight's downfall. Uh, added to that, Dr. Bader comes home only to reveal he is the other fist of Conchu, intent on punishing Moon Knight and serving Conchu as the Hunter's Moon. Yes, siree. Wow. Um, I'm saying that of the issue, not of my writing there, of the synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> um, your reading of it, Rebecca, it was, it was faultless. Uh, but yeah, the issue, my gosh, there were plenty of things uh, happening. A what a setup. Um, yeah. I don't know, uh, Rebecca, I'll, I'll give you the, the first first dibs here. Uh, what, what would you like to chat about first? What stood out? What stood out? Um, what stood out was how... Jed managed to get so much dense history and referencing 
mm-hmm. and make it make sense, I think, for a new reader. Um, like, none of it felt clunky. And, mm-hmm. and as we, you know, we've discussed various of his comics, it's very easy to get clunky about the DID, about um, the whole Conchu thing, about all his history. And and yet, and we, we start with action and, and having these sort of the, the flip between action, showing his new mission and him talking about his new mission. There's a, uh, they're sort of like, they, they parallel each other, but there's a, there's some disconnects with like what he thinks he is, what he might be, what he wants to be. And then it almost, it makes sense that the, um, uh, antagonists are people trying to break that apart, but yes. there's people around him helping. But we've had, and then the only area that we don't get any reference to is his usual um, gang of friends mm-hmm. and helpers, and it's not meant. Then none of them are mentioned, and that that means there's this. You don't need to. It's like it's like if you added that as well, that's too much information almost. When you've got the rest of an arc to to sort of like reference that in, like we're getting this is the status quo now. This is how it works in terms of him fighting. This is how it works in terms of his mental where he is with his mental health and his religion. So every single thing that we would normally put in our top 10 things you need to know about Mooncast, Moon Knight are covered mm. except for his supporting characters and that I didn't feel I didn't feel their loss like yes. I expected to be like oh where are they and I didn't feel their loss I I felt like oh that's something we can go to later I know where I am and I, and also I thought it was pretty masterful that we got action straight away and because I, I remember like you know we were talking about with um Lemira Lemira run and some of the Bemis run is not getting much of him just going and fighting baddies so so here sure. we get he's going and fighting baddies but also we get the other stuff as well and it's it's a really nice um I think it's a really nice bit of window shopping for new readers to say this is what the character's about yeah, uh, without but, getting too complicated, but being just complicated enough to grab us, the the sort of like slightly bigger fans. Yeah, look, I think you've definitely covered like really one of the main um, things that I found very interesting for this, and and we discussed it a little bit, uh, Rebecca. I saw your comments as well on on Twitter because someone had asked, uh, you know, Moon Knight, should I pick it up? Do I need to know about the past runs? But I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, Jed does a very good job, and oh, I just love those references. But it's not referenced like too much that I believe, as a first read, a first time reader, you'd be lost. Um, I think he balances it quite well. Um, all you just need to know is is what has been said. You know what they're discussing. So yeah, and, when- and um, all the things he says aren't duplicitous. Like it's not mm. like we're going, oh ha ha, he told the therapist this, and we know that's not true. Yeah. So, like, there's no gotchas for a new reader. Yes. And I think, uh, you know, like we're, we're going to keep coming back to this, but with the TV show coming up, with people more interested in some of the, uh, even without that, like, the MCU is, like, moving into sort of lesser-known characters generally. We know Moon Knight's not as well-known a character. And there's a lot, there's clamoring to under, to know a little bit about him before the series. Um, yeah. Like I hear a lot of people going like I don't know anything about him. Where should I start? And this, mm-hmm. so it's it's really nice to see a number one come in and just go. Here's some things you should know about him. Yeah, oh, and I totally agree with you about uh, his support cast as well. Uh, like his close network. I don't think I've actually come across anyone commenting yet online who's talking about issue one no. that are saying, oh, what about, you know, what about Frenchie? Yeah, what about Marlene? really miss Frenchie, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is really testament to Jed's writing because uh, I think, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. Putting that in the mix as well as introducing these new characters, it's just going to be too much. It's going to be too heady. So um, le- let's focus, as as Jed said, a laser focus on this. Moon Knight's gone on his own. Uh, we get introduced to these new characters, namely Reese and, and Dr. Badr, um and this mysterious person and at the Dr. end. Sherman. 
Dr. Oh, Stern. And, sorry, yeah, Dr. Sturman, yeah. yes, of course, um, who who has a history as well. I mean, yeah. Jed mentioned um, she she is you know renowned in the Marvel universe. Well, sorry, um, she is in the Marvel universe already at this point. Um, but I, th- I essentially Reese and Dr. Bad are a, 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 a newly created it's characters. So, yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, absolutely. The references. I mean, gosh. Uh, so yeah. I've got a list here. Uh, it, it's brilliant. I I loved it. So at the beginning um, with the the session with Dr. Sturman, there's a mention that he's died, of course. There's a quick recap of the origin, which only lasts, what, a page, Rebecca? There's a nice little splash of him in yeah, front of the... Yeah, he's done so nicely, actually. Mm. It's just like, you know, because that, the beauty of talking to a therapist is you have a reason to like you know they always given us give us a sort of dialogue point where you can so it's usually like a journalist a baddie Mm -hmm. you know like and it's just a therapist works very well both for mark's you know uh mental health and Mm -hmm. for coming out of the avengers if people have read that and then but it it means you can touch on things like you being jewish but the avatar of an egyptian god Yes. And starting a mission, which I know some people. I mean, I I was like, mm, Jewish guy running a mission, that's a little bit. But you mm. know, but he, but they deal with it, and like you know, um, they. Uh, I like him bringing up that mercenaries are bad men. Bad so, men, yeah, bad exactly. Things. Um, also as well, which is foreign countries for money. Oh like, yeah, let's he, not he op- let's not sugarcoat it. It's bad. So. Yeah, he openly admits it. Um, and there were references to Africa, South America there, which for me I took as the Sudan, which was in the origins, and uh, and Bosco Verde. I mean, a, a fictitious yeah. Yeah. Um, thing, but, you know, it, it seems to fit well in South America. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's true. Uh, as you said, there's a, a link to a reference to the Avengers more recently, Avengers 31 to 38, which was the age of Conchu. How Conchu is currently imprisoned and i like this uh, aspect rebecca of how he's the priest of someone that he doesn't really look up to anymore like he's um yeah he he knows conscious unworthy but he's still carrying out his his work so dr sermon's gonna what and he still feels he has a duty for having his life saved so yep um there is something almost jewish about that so Ah. But more yeah. of that one, I'm a bit more awake. But the, the, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that is interesting. It's not uh, uncommon, I guess, in in Moon Knight lore that uh, I mean, obviously they're always at loggerheads, um, Moon Knight yeah. and Conchu. But I, I guess the way that it's been um, framed here by Jed and and Doctor Sturman, like she really calls it out. She's like, "But you know, what, are you a yeah, heretic? Then? I mean, what do you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's the, 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 the thing is that like in, in Judaism there is quite a big tradition of questioning God." There's right. lots of there's lots of people in the Bible who did it, but even like during the Holocaust, a group of rabbis put God on trial. Ooh. So I mean, like yeah, there, right. there's right there, there are this, some parallels. Yeah, yeah, there is there is a tradition of this kind of like you know of having faith, but also not blind faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, that's very cool. Then I mean, that is that works very well. With the yeah, Lunar when I character. read the whole thing, when I read the whole thing about what are you an apostate, a schismatic, a heretic, and I was like, a, you know, priest at odds with his God, it, it's like it just it 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 resonated, and I don't know if it was meant awesome. to resonate in that way because I think it works very well for Mark and his current yeah. situation, but it also was like, oh yeah, um, if you ever want to read about that trial of God, incredibly good book. So wow. Well, yeah. I'm going to lay claim that Jed intended that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's awesome. Awesome bit of, I mean, if you look at it in that sense, my gosh, that, that's a great way to, um, mm-hmm. to to integrate the Judaism into into Moon Knight yeah. um, and yeah, his yeah. faith, yeah. Um, so, yeah, references of, of at the age of Konshu we got. Um, but going back, Dr. Sturman talks about how he had died twice more uh, and yeah. – on the nose references there to Mark Spector, Moon Knight, The Scarlet Redemption. It was part three, issue 28, when Mark gets thrown into the, is it the Hudson? The river. Yeah. Um, yep. And he literally dies there, but he comes back. And, of course, at the end of that run, issue 60 uh, by Terry Kavanagh, where Spectacle gets kind of blown up. Mark does that. And 
and offs himself. So uh, harking back to the 90s run, which I find very cool, you don't often get references to, to Mark Spector Moon Knight. No, you really so that, don't. Which is cool. No. And um, it's such a nice little reference, it's like kind of how many times you died, you know, like because they are yeah. trying to get to the bottom of can you die. Well, that, that's... Um, that's Again, what really amazed me as well, it's like this this question that Jed throws up, Sturman throws up, but J- Jed does as well. Can Moon Knight yeah. die then? You know, because yeah. it's proven that he, he comes back and again and again. And a fan of the character, you'd love to think, yeah, you know, he's almost immortal. Um, or it's is he? Also, yeah. It's also kind of almost on a meta level quite funny because you could say that about almost every comic character. But like <laughs> yeah, true, there's true. a specific resonance for it for Mark because of the sort of like, having this interaction with a god and having been actually resurrected the first time um but like you know we laugh about how many times correct characters are killed off and uh you know so i i gave that a kind of you know that can you die is like well you could really ask you know how many times can we ask other people you know yeah true yeah but this it makes a lot more sense that that's true i mean and it goes a step further as well i mean moon knight for me makes this statement that reminded me of the Ellis run where he says, I'm not real. Uh, and he says it uh, to the vermin characters. He basically says, I'm Moon Knight and I don't die or I can't die. Um, and it's that level of, uh, you know, has he taken on board what Sturman said and is he starting to believe that now himself or has he come to that realisation? That's, that's how I took it is that like, it's kind of in the top of his mind. Like, like he doesn't know, but he's, gonna say it mm. and like you know yeah uh, which is a really kick-ass moment um yeah uh, and just bouncing off that i mean we'll get back to more references but uh just bouncing to the artwork rebecca i just wanted to say i know we have um our thoughts on the art but i think moon knight's depicted quite uniquely here i mean he seems to be drawn differently to everyone else uh, as in i guess the textures mm-hmm. Of the inking, There's, there is a different text. There's a definite different texture to the inking. The blacks yeah. aren't solid. Mm. There's lots um, of he's spaces got, in it. He's got a glow also as well. In in um, yeah. there's a bit where he's talking to Reese and he's he's literally kind of glowing. His eyes are glowing as well. So he kind of looks a bit otherworldly, and and I like that aspect of the art. Um, yeah, I like the new uh, outfit as well. Yeah, outfit's cool. Yeah, uh, I. Th- I think Alessandro Capucci was saying uh, that they did draw from the Shelby, uh, but it's yeah. got a few tweaks here and there. It has lots um, of phases of the moon on. You'll be happy with <laughs> it. Does well. He's got those. Is now the most prominent ones seem to be off these shoulders, which yeah. I can see very much being you know the larger crescent darts, so to speak, because he he seems to have them, but you never see him use it. Um, I can see him using them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I like the kind of eclipsed moon on his like sternum below the new moon like the black oh oh yes oh yes right yeah. i didn't um i didn't notice that i'm looking at that splash now where he's saying and, and yeah yeah for sure that, yeah which uh goes i guess it's a it's a real negative to uh to hunter's moon you see he's he's obviously yeah, the negative yeah, version exactly. and he's got the yeah, he's got the full moon on his forehead. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I mean that's pretty cool. Um, I just uh, let's just go through just a couple of other things here. Uh, another thing references um, there's a, a reference to the Ellis and the the Wood Run of uh, Volume Seven uh, with Doctor Eliza Warsame. So she was the therapist that Mark had before, and she was the one that yeah. Mark's talking about was trying to trying to kill him um, yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before um, she had the same kind of, I guess, threads of thought as as Doctor Sturman about uh, yeah. this thing, Rebecca, about Cadman, Cadman's tale, yes. Cadman's, uh, uh, Cadman's hymn, which yes. is very cool because uh, it's another one that just got me. It's like if you're going to reference something, reference Old English and Anglo Saxons <laughs> because I yes. had to study it. Not only did I have to study it. But um, Cadman's hymn is only referenced to, like, the only reason we know about it is from the writing of the Venerable Bede, who was an 8th century monk, mm. who happened to be from where I used to live when we mm. first started, you know, like, so up in Newcastle where I used to live. Um, he was actually in Jarrow, which is, like, sort of, like, 
20, 30, 20 minutes walk from my house and we actually used, there's, there's an attraction there called Beads World where you can go and learn about his his life and he's like one of the earliest um you know he's sort of like telling us about what life was like in England at the time and uh so Cadman is known as being the first English poet because of him being referenced to by Bede um and he was like a cow herd that was a bit like that people thought nothing of him and he was shy and stuff. And then God uh-huh. appeared to him and he composed this hymn, uh, which we don't really have fully. Um, but we have sort of excerpt. We have what, what Bede wrote about it. So we have an excerpt of it and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and essentially that's kind of uh, likened to, to Mark or Sturman speculates whether, Something's happened to his brain, or you know, with his interaction with Conchu. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, a, there's a couple of sort of English literary figures where you have this happen, where God appears mm-hmm. and it it changes something about them. And in Cadman's uh, one, it was good. <laughs> there's another one yeah. where they went a bit mad and wrote poems to their cat, um, <laughs> right. which is which is another yeah. great sort of period of this. But this is just a very, it's just it's a really nice reference that really draws from. You know, like if you imagine how many stories there are about people who interacted with God and been changed in some way. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is such a like I liked how she she sort of did that to like did his mind actually change because Cadman was specifically said to be, um, I guess, you know, like. I don't know, like to have, to maybe have learning difficulties of some sort, okay. and for this to have changed him, and so there's a you know like there's a kind of like I like the idea of like what could have changed you other than immortality, like could it yeah. have changed how you think? Could it could he have changed you know your outlook? Mm-hmm. And and it's mm-hmm. separate from the DID. She's not saying did the interaction. Yes do anything to your mental health she's just saying did it rewire your brain in any way yeah it's it's a really it's an interesting take i think from jen mckay and mm-hmm. i think the fact that conchu is kind of established now like you see with the the avengers yeah. age of conchu everyone knows where he is now mm-hmm. they they know what he did i mean he's like it's, he's like hercules and stuff in terms of he's there he might yes. be mythological but he's there yeah but it's not a matter of uh you know is mark you know, does Mark truly believe he was saved by Conchu or is that just in his head? That's kind of dispelled now. But to make it quite interesting is now this thing about, okay, how has Conchu affected like Mark's brain? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I think that's a really nice different take on, on Moon Knight. Uh, and it's something uh, absolutely appropriate to the character, his, his relationship with Conchu. And it's something that even if we don't get it answered, it's still an interesting question. Yeah. Yeah. It can be left ambiguous, I think. it'd be. Yeah, um, and I... I... I like I like that that it doesn't have to be an answered question for us to have it in the like you've planted it in the back of our mind now. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it it we I don't know if I I mean it'd be interesting to get an answer, but I don't know if I need one. Is you know, like sometimes comics drop things in that you're like, Oh, that better yeah. be answered by the end yeah. of issue six. Like this I I don't True. mind if this carries on being a sort of hanging question. Yeah, me me too. I mean I I wonder we might get regular appearances with Dr. Sturman. I'm assuming we do, um, but I, I wonder how far to, she... Yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. And I just wonder how far she takes it. And and uh, as you say, though, you know, if she, if it's still left up in the air by issue six, I mean, I'm not worried at all. Um, yeah. But she does certainly bring some interesting questions about Moon Knight, um, i.e. Jed as well. So it's um, yeah. Uh, yeah, really, kind of really well done. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know, we... Can go to oh look if I stick to a, a little bit more of um, the references then yeah uh, so I mentioned that Eliza uh, again there's also a mention of um, oh, actually probably not I put in Doctor Emmett I can't remember in the run if they, they maybe it's just that. talking about his other therapists other therapists so again yeah so again like we said at the beginning you don't really need to know all of this if you're a first time reader of Moon Knight but this is just fun for those that do know the history yeah. of it and and Jed. As we said, integrate it so well into the into the story that you really can't. You know, you're not you're not left scratching your head, going, "Oh God, I'm going to have to read all this now." Yeah. Um, 
there's talk of the Embracer, Pathfinder, Defender, which was brought up in the Ellis run, um, mm-hmm. and is very much an aspect of Conchu, but had not really been used in Moonlight until the Ellis run. Um, so that, that's mentioned as well. Uh, there's also a mention of, of werewolves, so you could arguably and say... Jack Monroe. And Jack Monroe as well. Yes, uh, is Nomad, right? Yeah. Is he? Is he? Yeah. Um, so uh, Werewolf by Night, 32, 33. Uh, then, yeah, you do get those references, uh, Jack Munro and Rutherford Winner. Yeah. Um, so I'm unfamiliar with Rutherford, but um, Rebecca, you had um, yeah, mentioned from, that was from uh, a... Je- Jed's Daughter of, the Drag- Daughter of the Dragon Mini that he did yes. in 2018, which was probably the first of his things I ever read. Mm-hmm. Um, because of course I'm going to read Dorse the Dragon of course <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah so he is he was part of Project Pygmalion from Hydra which is basically mm-hmm. taking people and rewriting them and so oh. yeah so he's messed up in many okay. ways and also became a bit of an assassin so and they take him out but they also help him so and then okay, he so he's, so. Oh, so he's very much he's like a villain turned turned hero, or he's or kind of a, like set set on the daughters for, set on them, and yeah. then they help him get some help. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yes, Which and would explain uh, why uh, Doctor Sturman had perhaps spoken to him as one of her yes. best clients. Oh yeah, and, and uh, I guess um, Jed drawing from his uh, his pool of characters that he, he'd written to to connect them. Uh, yeah, as why well. not? So yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so we also I guess the other big one, Rebecca. I mean, we have to talk about Hunter's Moon, Doctor Better. Um, he was a really good introduction, actually. I did not expect to see Hunter's Moon in issue one, like we all know the cover of issue three and everyone's kind of like, oh, this is cool. We get a new villain in issue three. I did not expect him mm-hmm. in, vill- uh, in issue one. And when yeah, we first... Everyone who, bought, everyone who bought issue three hoping for a first appearance. Yeah, yes, exactly. To be fair, you should have all bought issue one anyway. So, True. You know. yeah. <laughs> but we, we get introduced to him beating up on eight ball uh, as Dr. Yeah. Dada. and. And at that stage, I just thought, like, at the end of this conversation with Moon Knight, I, I just thought he was uh, one of the acolytes of Konshu. I'm thinking, oh, okay, this guy's, this is another little part of the mix. I did not have in my mind Hunter's Moon at all. So then at the end, when we get Dr. Better walking home and putting on that mask and having his own statue of Konshu yeah. and saying, I'm the other fist, I'm going, oh, this is such a stroke of <laughs> genius. You yeah, know? and they also both run free clinics to help yes. people and yep. if you look at what when he first meets him dr Bada's all in sort of oranges and well yellow i guess sort of like mm-hmm. Luke cage yellow uh orangey like more sun colors mm-hmm. and marks in his black and uh yeah but he he slags him off straight away, Doctor Bad. Yeah, he does. <laughs> You're not doing a very good knows, job. And he knows he's, and he knows his mark straight away. But I assume Cult of Conchu gets some insight there. Oh yes, that's true as well. Um, and to be yeah. fair, Mark starts off with "I outrank you." <laughs> true, true. I mean, Mark's playing the power game as well. But um, but to be uh, but, fair, but, uh, like you know, you'd think being called Moon Knight, you would, you know, like yeah. Oh no, for sure. Um, but he he makes some good points, saying disappointed in in what you're doing. Um, you know you, you're left you left our you know our god our master um, in prisons, mm-hmm. and you're not do, you're not doing anything about it. And you're also allowing vampires in the territory. It's blasphemous, that sort of stuff. So uh, he seems to be very, I guess, set and straightforward in how he has to serve Conchu. Like he's very um, devoted, I guess, compared to Mark. What's all of Mark? He is. I noticed that as well. Yeah. yeah. I, first, when they were, and and I wondered in my head, okay, was that intentional? Because we know Mark is, I think six foot two, six foot four, six foot two. I think he's pretty tall. Yeah, I have so, no idea what the idea is. I'm glad you know Mark. Like, yeah, Mark. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> it's a big black um, Mark against me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but that's a point though. Like he's taller than Mark, so he's yeah. he's a big dude. It's uh, definitely. Like in that way, he's, when Mark's handing him the handcuffs, there's a yeah. 
there's a little bit of physical intimidation there. Mm, mm. Um, so he's a very interesting character. I mean, I know a lot of people are going to shout out Russell from the Tomes of Evil. Very interested in this new villain. Uh, his podcast all mm. about villains. Yeah. Uh, Hunter's Moon. Uh, he's got a whole heap of terrifying weapons at that last page. Um, yeah, yeah, so he, he's, uh, he's one to look out for. Definitely up for the, the fight. Sorry, what was that, Rebecca? Up for the fight. Up for the fight, absolutely. Uh, and I guess we if we go to... So the, we know he's going to be an antagonist to, to Moon Knight, yeah. but Jed doesn't stop there. Um, he's got someone, and I like the way that he introduces him, um, because we see Dr. Batter just walking past the mission, past Mr. Knight and Reese, and then you've got this, this other faction, this other party, just looking through the yeah. blinds across the road. So he With, immediately um, to me... I, what's that, yeah. a surveillance camera? I don't know what that is. It looks like a satellite dish, yeah. which makes sat- sense. I think, but yeah, what? I think that's to pick up the, the audio. It's like one of those, um, I don't know, maybe it, mega... I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's easier way to bug people, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, a nice, it's a beautiful visual shot of it, so I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, but I think it shows that they're they're not connected. I'm assuming that at least he's not connected to Doctor Batter at all. He yeah he seems to be just someone yeah someone out to get Moon Knight. Uh, and there are little tidbits here, Rebecca. I've got a a massive th- theory now. I so I, bear w- I've I've seen your theory, but <laughs> <Zoom up. laughs> so bear with me. Um, so if you look, the guy behind the laptop. Has got all the di- all the juice on on Moon Knight. He knows the identities. There's a pinboard at the back with the Daily Bugle on there. So it's like, oh, well, that's a bit interesting. Um, and what we've seen, Jed has introduced at least uh, two Spider-Man villains here with Vermin that Moon Knight uh, fights, and and Oddball. Oh no, sorry, and Reese has Eightball. a Spider-Man cup. And Reese has a yes, he has a Spider. She has a Spider-Man I'm just cup. It's like egg you on before telling you I disagree but carry on okay, okay. anyway uh, the the thing about Vermin he can clone himself that actually came from an amazing Spider-Man story arc called Hunted uh, where Craven and uh, another villain uh, actually put Spider-Man through the ringer uh, but the other villain is Arcade and Arcade actually injects Vermin and you know gives him this ability to clone himself now, looking at this guy in the shadows with a smile, you know, kind of like a, you know, dare I say, a Joker-esque smile. I was going to say, please say Joker, because <laughs> we, have to, we have to cross that uh, Rubicon at yeah. some point. <laughs> yes. Uh, but he talks about he wants to make a project out of him, which, you know, arcades, you know, they're all games to him. Uh, you know, um, he's been contracted to, to set up games. Uh, he mentions about his statements are usually big, lots of flash, lots of pizzazz, lots of bodies. For me, that says arcade as well. Uh, the only thing I don't kind of see is why he has this kind of hatred for, for Moon Knight. Because um, he's generally a contractual like villain. He, mm-hmm. he gets contracted yeah. into. I think that's, to do that, is the, that is the big the the biggest flaw in the like I don't mm. dislike the theory I think it has a lot going for it I think you're right in everything you've said I mm-hmm. just I just like I don't know there does seem to be a big personal like yeah. the thing about you've like wanting why he's wasting his potential like what what does he want to do with yeah. Moon Knight uh, why so does he that... want to break his faith and it, and it is going back to a, a word he menticide which is beautifully yes. slipped in by Dr. Sturman and then this yeah. then we actually get this is what this guy wants the the antagonist this antagonist I'm saying antagonist right now because I'm we're not sure they're bad guys yet mm-hmm. okay but they're definitely antagonists I mean this guy seems much worse than Hunter's Moon but they're definitely antagonists for Mark um, oh, yeah. but yeah cuz cuz menticide is about breaking someone's faith okay um, right and uh and and you know for anyone who hasn't yeah it means uh an a, a systematic effort to undermine and destroy a person's values and beliefs okay oh so, yeah. great great pick up though yeah i have another random one for you i have nothing yes. to back it up 
I just wanted to say I've, this word to matter. you in a yes. podcast again. Cool killer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> I came. Uh, that was in my mind as well. Full killer. Because um, I can't yeah. ever not think full killer. But I again, I don't see why there would be a personal connection there. And mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that his statements are usually big either. Y oh, so I, uh, you could argue. I mean, like, because he's what he does is is pretty. Well, yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't think big... he's known for big showy. Yeah, like, that's fair uh, Body counts and things like that. Whereas Arcade is. Yeah. I mean, and um, you know. I'm not going to mention what other people speculated because let them do it as feedback. But there were some oh, other yes. suggestions I think have a lot of weight. I think, um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I with the Daily Bugle thing, I immediately thought um, Sin Eater as well. But I, I don't mm -hmm. know. He was I in the see, Amazing I, Spider Man. I, I think I think the Daily Bugle is a nice drop in there. I'm not entirely sure it's the clue everyone thinks it is. Okay. Because if you were tracking superheroes in new york you would probably have a copy of the daily bugle that's true but rebecca but subtlety I'm... you said the spotty mug no <laughs> i know so... but they could also they could also be like um uh like fools like easter eggs do you know what i mean like they could yeah, be like yeah, and yeah. then and then you pivot true. and it's just someone and and it's i would say you know like someone random like i'm just saying that i, I don't think it's given i think it does appear that there's some like a connection to street level or spidey mm -hmm. related things, but um, it it could yeah. be like a, a sort of de a deflection or deception. It could be, whatever. yeah, I'm like sleight of hand. The actual word, I mean, that's what I mean, sleight of hand. Yeah. Um, yeah, because be. you know, like the fact that he's got the sort of. Um, uh, perp shots of like Mark, Stephen, Moon Knight, Mister Knight, Lockley, mm -hmm. um, with a Daily Bugle. It could just be that that's how he's been tracking them, or it could be like it. It could be something related to the bugle. So, yeah, um, I'm true. just saying. Like, I'm not as good as I'm not really good with speculation because I tend to read something like this and just go, "Yeah, I'm in," and yeah. and just and just let it unwind. But I really enjoy other people's speculation, and I, you know, so. I, I, I'm not really here to say you're wrong. I think it, it's an interesting oh, yeah. idea. I think every idea people have thrown out so far is interesting. Um, yeah. I, look, so, I, 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 um, this is sorry. Anyone. Yeah, um, I saw this something is suggest Rutherford winner actually. Ooh, so, okay. Yeah. Well, it could well be. I mean, that that could uh, his name is mentioned. I mean, it could be, but it seems again like I'm not sure why he'd do it on his own yeah. behalf. Yeah. You know, oh, like it, because it doesn't seem to be anyone working for anyone else. This seems to be, I'm I'm going to come in oh, and like do a, this to a you. A personal vendetta, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, look, this is kind of rubbed off on me. I want to shout out Sarah and my co-host from To Know Who Is Sophia Spider Woman podcast. She she loves doing tinfoil hat theories, <laughs> and um, <laughs> hearing her theories with the Spider Woman series, uh, and then looking at this first issue of Moon Knight, you know. Just like kid in the candy shop, I had to I had to really get into it as well. It is fun, um, but yeah, I generally just ride ride the wave and see what happens. But um, looking for these clues, you know, whether they are clues, they or are not, very cool. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, Jed, if Jed is listening to this, he may be, you know, you know, chuckling away at at all these uh, at all these attempts at discovering who this mysterious person is. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But that's mine. Yeah. I'm going to lay claim to Arcade. Um, <laughs> I'll lay uh, we'll claim see. to Full Killer, which I have no yes. backup for. I just like <laughs> Full Killer. <laughs> I don't think exactly. anyone who's listened to the Moonlight podcast knows how much I like Full Killer. I have like no, I, I don't honestly think it's him, but um, I like whoever it is, and I like their Joker smile, and that made me laugh. Yeah. So because it is so like that final panel of him is so Joker. That it, that like, is, and uh, do you recall Rebecca as well? I think Russell was telling me because I was speculating, speculating with Russell. Um, in our discussions, our chat with Jed, did he say that there would be no? Did he say something about the? It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be an established Moon Knight villain, right? So, yeah. Yeah. okay. Oh, he did. Okay. So yeah. So we know we can take them off the table. Um. So yeah. Cool. Still holds. Still because I, I I thought at first after reading it once the issue, Rebecca and, and you know I, I thought it was Randall for some reason, but then it just it didn't make sense. The more 
the further I, I dug deep. I'm like, since I've uh, just done the Randall podcast with uh, Russell, I'm like, <laughs> so that's someone who's died a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so this mysterious figure, very exciting. I, I love how this is introduced. Um, anything that keeps you as a reader kind of guessing and, and on yeah. tenterhooks for the next issue is, is a good thing. And also the unexpected reveal. So as I mentioned, that reveal of Hunter's Moon, which came earlier than I expected, uh, that was really cool. Um, and I, did I not pick. very, very much like, I would like to thank whoever did white on orange for the text boxes for him because it is ah. so clear and easy to read. And I'm yes. so sick of uh, antagonists getting red on black or orange on black. Oh, yeah. Good point. It just can't oh. read it. And this is so beautiful. And also, oh. so here's here's my little so all the all the all the speech bubbles we've had, or whatever people call them, I call them whatever, they're all uh very traditional, very rounded, mm-hmm. jaggy, normal. Um the fonts really not you get to Hunter's Moon, they are perfectly regimented little like you could have done them on a computer kind of like um ah. rectangles with their what do you call that rectangles without the rounded rectangles oh the beveled edges yeah yes right yeah uh they're very contained and ordered mm. and placed perfectly with none of the little you know so everything it, it just gives you this little feeling about what kind of person he is yeah like some marks a- a normal like but all over the place like all of us um mm. and and normal and just and then you get this perfectly you know his his talk how he talks to Konshu, yeah. greatest god oh. of the great gods well i'm sure some people would uh have something <laughs> to say about that well i mean it's great you're right it totally sums him up doesn't it um he's he's full-on devoted uh he's a devout follower uh and he yeah he's I wouldn't say robot like, but he's just yeah, he's just very He's very just driven clinically and ordered clinically. and Yes. Yeah. So and you literally and he even mentions your right hand has failed, your left hand hasn't. And it's it's yeah. almost like that right hand like right side of the brain, left side of the brain split of like yeah. um between them and yeah. It's a really a nice cool th- parallel. It's such a cool thing. And the left hand as well, sinister, you know. Yeah. The double yeah. the double meaning for that. Um, it, it's it's such a cool idea from Jed. Um, Moon Knight requires yeah. correction, which uh, yes, well, yes, yeah, see, very kind of uh, you know regimented like yeah. language. So you have yeah, he wants all... to punish him. The other dude wants to break him down. Oh gosh, yes, uh, to and see to see what's underneath everything. So that's mm-hmm. kind of cool. So like, so that he wants to break him down to see what you really are which is kind of also what the therapist is doing, but in a different way and in a supportive way. So you have all mm-hmm. these these things playing into it to really beg that question, who are you? And on top of that as well, Rebecca, uh, I'm going to segue into Reese. He's a mm-hmm. uh, – well, they, they yep. described her as a receptionist or she's an aide or something. I like how Mark says, I like you – we get along because you, you're the only one that doesn't try to fix me. So – yeah. And everyone She's... else really is trying to fix him. Yeah, or yeah, break exactly. Him so down she... to fix him, yeah. Exactly. So I think that's actually really cool. And it just occurred to me when you were mentioning all of that. I mean, the um, the, the mysterious guy, um, you know, Hunter's Moon, Doctor Sturman. It's like, yeah, but Reese is like the control for that. She's like the the um, complement to that. She just she's also she's the, just there. You, the the traditional. You save me, so I'm gonna yeah come help you. Um, yes. But but not in a kind of subservient. Oh my god, you're amazing! You saved me. Yeah. You saved my life. It's oh. more like you know, like no, get your own coffee. And uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that because he asked her um, while he's in in session, and she go get yourself. But it was really good. I think later on, because so then you do kind of get a sense of there is an um, a friendship there because she just brings it to yeah. him as well and makes whether or not it's an excuse of like oh well, I just remembered I can't drink coffee so here you go yeah so. Yeah. There is a nice, there's a, a I nice really relationship. Like the dynamic. I really oh, me too, like. me too as well. And and the fact that she thinks that they get along because she's biologically compelled to keep the same schedule, but then he says no, no, it's because you you don't want to fix me. And I think there's a lot of comfort in that 
he kind of gets to just relax a bit around her, doesn't, you know, have him interrogated. I also think yeah. around all the forces we've got in this comic of therapy and antagony, antagonists, antagony, I'm making up new words, um, <laughs> Mark in that one panel shows a very good sense of understanding himself. Like, this is why I like mm. you. It's not just because I'm trying to to help you because you've been turned into a vampire and don't know what to do about it. No, like, the, the, it, I, I recognize why I like you is because you're not trying to fix me. Mm. So, like, for all the, some of the previous depictions we've had of him about not being sure about things, um, having mental breaks, um, this is just seems a, a moment of clarity. Mm, it, it, it does. It, he's pretty clear throughout the whole issue, but like just that one is like him understanding why he likes someone. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And again, like um, you, you know, we're getting a really good introduction to these new support or this support character at least. Oh, Doctor Stern. And I if guess. I wanted to look into it much further, I'd be like, I wonder if maybe some of his supporting his old supporting cast tried to fix him too much. Mm, yes, and this is why that's uh, he's taken a bit of a break. I was I was thinking that as well. Like when he said that, I was thinking, does is he kind of indirectly referring to like Frenchie and Marlene in particular? You, you I know? mean, it, it has a a level of wistfulness mm. that that kind of implies it a little bit. Like you could take it that way, or mm. you could just take it for what it is. So exactly. Exactly, but uh, but Reese is a cool a cool character. Um, I wonder, Rebecca, if we will see the other three in yeah, the van, you know. um, because they were quickly forgotten. So Moon Knight dispatches with the two uh, who were obviously there that had turned uh, the four of these innocents, uh, one including yeah. Reese, uh, but the three just be. I wonder. I wonder if they return. We don't know. We'll have to see. Um, now, just finally, Rebecca, uh, before I guess we wrap things up, uh, other big sweeping things here. I'm looking at uh, the Midnight Mission. I mean, what did you what did you think of this? We do get a whole series of in in really. I think Jed again does this really well. Uh, like you get the sense that there are a lot of missions that he's been on. Like he mm-hmm. takes on a lot of uh, cases. Uh, so we see, obviously, the vampires were one of them. We get Vermin, uh, this this older lady comes and um, sees Moon Knight, Mr. Knight, about uh, the rats in the building, hey, yeah. Vermin. Uh, and then you get you get one on 8-Ball. Um, but we see him, like, one of the things that stood out for me, he's arm-wrestling Frankenstein. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. There's a very much a monster so element. Funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there seems to be, like, a bar full of Franken- Frankenstein. Hang on, I'm having a quick little look because it's a smaller... Um, yeah, they all look like to be Frankenstein people because they've all got like stitches around them, uh, and they're kind of egging this guy on who's doing that arm wrestle with with Moon Knight. Um, yeah, pretty funny. Uh, so I like a you get a you get an overall sense that he's been busy. Like you know, we're establishing that it's not like the mission is is just starting. Like he's got he's yeah. had all these cases. Um, yeah, I like even how it's inter- and I also like how it's interspersed with him like sweeping the pavement in front of the Moon Knight mission as Mr. Yeah, yes. Knight. So like, I, I like that kind of like level of domesticity yes. versus the action. I, I think it does it, it interacts very well. The paneling's great. Yeah. Um, but just yeah, showing all those things at once. It's just getting a lot of information into a very small amount of space. Yeah, and, and that's all you really need to do. I mean, we know that there'll be probably cases down the down the track, but just to let us know, okay. It's well established, and and I do like that as well, Rebecca. I think it really grounds it by having the domesticities, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, just him, Great just him. Moons on the walls, love her. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just go, taking you a do breather, you, Mister Knight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and uh, just taking a breather in front of the in front yeah. of the shop, so to speak, with oh, the chair, and just it, it's just really cool. It, it brings him down to earth. Um, yeah, so the midnight mission, I'm really really enjoying. Um, 
just like uh, with that. Comment there. I can't go on seeing enemies behind every drawn curtain. And on the next page, there's a, an enemy behind oh. <laughs> the blinds. <laughs> that is funny, actually. <laughs> um, enemy, like, like directly opposite them. I'm like, it's like, oh, okay. I mean, you can't get any cl- any closer and any, you know, behind a drawn curtain <laughs> yeah. than that. So, <laughs> uh, but there are, um, a fair few other things is like oddball. There's a look of oddball. He throws him off the roof. Um, yeah, I love. I did. Yeah, he he's so it was uh, a big apparently splash of color for oddball as well. It was just like nice. yeah, yeah. It was it's really cool. Um, I did a bit of research as well. He apparently is a a drinking buddy of eight ball uh, in the bar with no name. Um, very <laughs> uh, famous villain hangout. Uh, he's he's apparently in canon. He's dead as is eight ball. So both of those characters, Jed has resurrected uh, just for this. Just to meet a, a quick demise yet again, um, yes. Yeah, so eight uh, oddball is there. Just just a villain who apparently is really good at juggling Rebecca, which I thought was really really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> very very odd. That's why his name, I guess, says it. Uh, I was going to say it's all, it's all in the name. It's all in the name. Yeah, true. Uh, any uh, any thoughts on on art or anything, Rebecca? Before we wrap up, I. I wasn't sure about all of the art mm-hmm. um, when I went into it, like from the preview. But actually, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Like, I like that kind of sketchiness about the blacks in the outfit. Yeah. I like Mark not being quite. Um, and then, but then you and then you switch to the Mister Knight, and it's all very clear cut. I like mm-hmm. that sort of difference between Mister Knight and Moon Knight. In that, I I think I love the coloring throughout the coloring is great rosenberg does a great job yeah, yeah. i think yeah. there's a really nice mix of some detailed backgrounds and some undetailed backgrounds you look at okay. dr sturman's office with all the books and stuff like that but you get yeah. some of the more action scenes and it's a bit less it's a bit more focused in on the people yes yeah um, I, I yeah sorry sorry carry on Oh no! I was about to say I, I kind of agree with you with that. Um, there are some great like backdrops and stuff. What what I do like one of the things I, I would love though is that yeah, some of those backgrounds are a little too a little sparse. Um, like uh, you know, and this is obviously it could be various factors for this as well. Um, so there are beautiful shots of the city, but sometimes yeah, the streets and, the, and stuff look very bare and clean. I, I just love to see a little bit more. Um, I think I it know, does its job. I think, like, yeah. given like the sort of monthly comic cycle, I think they're detailed where they really need to be. Like all oh, the absolutely, they are. Ponshu, yeah. the books that. I, but yeah, you know, I don't. I don't disagree. I just think that, like, I didn't notice it when I was reading it because I was too taken up by the action. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it. I think in that way. It's fine, and when you get that big splash page of the with the where he's asking Reese to do a mic a mic check and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that the skyscrapers yes. there are oh. incredible. So I'm like, it's, look, it's if we lose a bit of background on some of the pages to get those kind of shots, I'm all right with that. Yeah, agreed. And then, I mean, but I then you look yeah. at the coloring of like when they're talking on the park bench. The yes, the, the coloring is beautiful brilliant. lighting. I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Then the yeah. switches in styles when he's doing all his different action sequences to all the purples and reds when he's chatting to Reese and some mm-hmm. of the beautiful shadow work with that the guy with the Daily Bugle thing like from mm-hmm. the shadows from the blinds it's just really yeah. beautifully done. Oh, it is. It is. Um, yeah, so, look, I, I can't... but yeah. I mean, I I I like the art a lot, and uh, mm-hmm. I think now I'm used to it. I don't I don't like the covers as much, but luckily they've given us. Oh options of a billion covers so. yeah yeah look i'm like you as well i am um, having seen a taste thing oh yeah exactly exactly it's a taste thing and and i was like you though like when seeing the previews i thought oh am i gonna really like the art but uh, i have to say every shot of moon knight is brilliant with his different mm-hmm. texts i love how he um capuccio's depicted moon knight uh yeah you're right the backdrops are great uh you know when I they like are the vampire's there. fangs are spot on. Yeah. Beautiful oh, Beautiful fang yeah, work. Even, even the setting of Mr. Knight's armchair, you know, with the, with the, uh, the fronds mm. um, and, and the hieroglyphs and everything, really good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just a little quibble uh, for me about, about that. Um, like, just also, as we'll say, like the, the vermin fight scenes, uh, again, look, 
call me a spoilt, a spoilt reader. Yeah. But spoiled. you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, maybe a bit more sound effects, stuff like that. Because some some of the action scenes seemed really they quiet little, for me. They are a little unsound affected, but uh, yeah, I didn't it just really comes across it. very. Like it's only when oh, you okay. mentioned it that I noticed. Okay, it just it just seemed a little silent for me, and then whether that is an intent um, that I mean, I but just, they managed just... to get the motion really well. But yeah, the you're right. Great. There's just there's just a little bit of a little bit less sound effect, comic book sound effect. Yeah, and and the beginning with the van um, when that kind of creaks over and stuff. Yeah, mind you, mind you, I love the use of the Moon Knight's cape. There's that that panel where you get the, the yeah. movement of the van. And it's almost yeah. as if he's crawling inside. You see the the cape kind of slowly going in. Um, that was really cool. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, the art is really good. So um, yeah, really, definitely a beautiful thing to look at. Uh, the colours are brilliant, and the writing is is there. Uh, Rebecca, shall we shall we get to our rating? Oh, hang on, sorry, I've got just a couple of notes. If that's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I had just things that I didn't know, so people may know. Uh, the vampires mentioned the Omicron level. Uh, yeah. And that is the 15th letter of the Greek alphabet. So if you're looking at a pyramid scheme, those vampires were way down, <laughs> way down it. Because again, if you turn someone, you can, you can reach the Omicron level. Uh, still a long way to, still a long way to go. <laughs> uh, also, when we see uh, Dr. Better, he mentions eight, eight ball was trying to steal some Oxycontin. And that's a medication used to help relieve severe ongoing pain, so um, stuff like um, cancer. Um, so that was just the drug that he mentions as well. Uh, and, and that's about it. We've covered all the others, Jack Munro, Rutherford Winter, or Winner, sorry, and, uh, and the other three vampires. But just in case you're wondering about those things. Uh, okay, as for ratings, Rebecca, how are we going to go here? This is uh, you know I've already picked Connors for one reason. Oh, are you going to go for give it? it? I want to give it... Yeah, I am. I want to give it a 10. Excellent. Um, a cool. big fuck off moon. Oh, they are far and few between. That is brilliant. So Rebecca has given it the big 10 out of 10. I am changing my score. <laughs> I'm going to... I mean, not, not too bad. Only to bump it up to... And I, I have to use the... I'm using the vanilla rating. I'm going to give it a full moon. So that's in the range of the nine and a half. Say to ten out of ten. Uh, I've got to just take a little bit off, um, just from those little quibbles that I, I mentioned. But as far as first issues, setups, and entertainment goes, this has it all. It is very solid, a very solid book, uh, solid reading, um, visuals, beautiful to I look think, at. Honestly, it's one of the best number ones I've read in a long time, and I, I don't say that specifically because I'm a Moon Knight fan. I just mm-hmm. mean it feels very accomplished at. Um, tying in a little bit of history and a setup for something new without feeling overwrought or slightly short because sometimes they feel yeah. short to me because you don't yes. get a lot of new information in, in number ones mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah I think like yeah. you know like, I, I don't think it's perfect despite the 10 out of 10 but um, I think it's about as good in a number one as you can get therefore 10 out of 10 mm. Uh, yeah, and I think it helped as well. Jed mentioned he asked Tom if he could have another ten pages, uh, so mm. it, it, mm. clocking in at thirty-one pages, so four ninety-nine. I think it was well worth yeah. it. I mean, um, it really, it, really benefits from it. It does. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at, I was trying to reminisce about issue one eighty-eight, Rebecca, with the Beamers, because I know we love that as well. A very different kind of first issue, but um, was it was, was highly it was entertaining. Also ex- it was it, it it was also i think it did it introduced a lot of new characters very well mm-hmm. um and you know we got more revelations about his inner party uh, inner group but um it didn't sort of do the uh sad, uh, it didn't it wasn't quite as good at all the referencing of all the old stuff yes. it didn't need to be because of what he was doing like it's, it's mm-hmm. a totally different run it's like but yeah i also True. I thought that was another very good one. But at the time, I mean, we, we scored that one very highly and deservedly so. Yes. But at the time, there was a lot of good number ones coming out because they were doing that whole, the whole Marvel Legacy reboot. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and there were yeah, a yeah. lot of good number ones. Um, I don't remember seeing as good a number one as this one for a while. Um, mm. Yep. So. Um, it's just very tight. It's very tight. 
Like it's yeah, yeah. it's just it's just it's just very t- exactly. It's just yeah. pretty pretty good. And if if we can keep even seventy five percent of this quality going forward, we're very happy. Yeah. Oh, me, me too as well. Um, and so, readers, if you haven't read it yet, if this hasn't kind of, uh, you know, whet your appetite, uh, I don't know what will. Please go check it out. Uh, if you have read it already, I'm going to give a, a – going to jump straight into next phase. We're going to do a bit of a feedback episode, so get your feedback in. Let us know what you think as well of this yes, first issue. come we, up with some – we want more speculation. Yes. Oh, absolutely. We always try to as make it a bit of a – possible. Yeah, yeah. Try to make it a bit of a, a an a occasion, an event. These issue one, so um, and a new series as a whole. We try to make it a little special. So, uh, yeah. Let us know your thoughts, your theories, uh, and uh, we'll read it out and we'll discuss in a feedback issue or ep- uh, episode um, coming up. But Rebecca, that pretty much takes us uh, to this reaction episode. Thank you so much. Uh, gosh, you're probably only starting to wake up now as well. Yeah. Just about, I'm just about finished my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got a bit more on my tea left. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, so next phase, listeners, we'll, we'll try to get some feedback, a feedback episode that will be coming hopefully soon. Uh, but we really wanted to get this reaction episode out as quick as we can after the release of the, the comic book. Uh, spectacle wise, a, a shout out again to Tomes of Evil. There's a Moon Knight, a Villain Mania month. Rebecca, you've just been dropped on that episode uh, discussing yes, Randall. Yes, Randall. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know really cool. all about how badly Marlene comes out of every Randall appearance. <laughs> yeah, I've listened to about half. I'm, I'm still going through it, but, uh, yeah, very highly entertaining. Uh, Chad was on before talking about Bushmen, so plenty of Moon Knight villains there. Go check out Terms of Evil. Uh, Daniel Doing's got a GoFundMe for Fringe Night, issue six. Uh, the link in the show note there, show notes there. Paul Davidson, uh, Moon Knight alumni, uh, from the Bemis Run. He's Kickstarter for Fantastic Illustrated, all about his artwork and, and how to, how to draw, uh, is still out. So, um, check that out if you want. Uh, and finally, Moon Knight Origins, they've got an Indiegogo page. They're doing a Moon Knight fan film. It looks really cool. Uh, again, links in the show notes. Go check it out. See if you can pledge. Uh, they want to do behind the scenes stuff. Uh, they've got a full cast. Hope to get them on the show very soon as well. Uh, and finally, as well, there's the Phases of the Moon Knight essays examining the world of Moon Knight by Scott Weatherly. Go email Scott at 20th Century Geek at Gmail if you want to write about Moon Knight and get it published. Uh, very cool and paid yeah. as well. So, uh, so once again, Rebecca, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, can't wait to, um, to, to look at the next one. We've also got another little thing coming up, Rebecca, uh, with, uh, I guess a spotlight on DID, which will be very cool. To, I to am do. so excited about that. I cannot yeah. even, I know I'm sounding tired and stuff. I literally am really excited <laughs> about it just from the, the, initial introduction we've had to it mm, i can't wait i'm gonna to have to fit that in somewhere but um we'll, we'll definitely make sure we can do it hopefully not in the wee hours of the morning for you, for you rebecca yeah um. it just i like, if it happens it happens i know i have a weird yeah. time zone compared to everyone else and as it happens i usually am up in the middle of the night so yeah you're very much a Moon Knight fan, Rebecca. Yes. Very, very much. <laughs> anyway, having uh, having said that, take care, everyone, and uh, make sure you watch over the denizens of the night. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Loonies, you can contact us through various social platforms. You can drop us a line on email at itkmoonnight at gmail.com we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash ITK Moon Knight, and a Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash ITK Moon Knight. We are on Twitter, our handle is at ITK Moon Knight, and we're on Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube to search for Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. We're also on Discord, just search for the server Into the Night with a K. Please leave an iTunes rating or review if you can. It helps us reach other loonies out there too. Also, if you have any feedback, we also look to improve ourselves and the show. Finally, we're on all good podcast catches. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, also on PodCoin. Please check us out and share episodes with your friends. 
Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.